Good morning, everybody. Just wanted to talk to you again about some cool stuff that I've learned that God's just, uh, gosh, he's so good. Um, last week, we were talking about taming the tongue, taming the monster. We used James and uh, talked about the metaphor of a bridle, a bit in a horse's mouth and the rudder of a ship. All I'm really trying to say to you is um, God's created you to where your words are powerful you could say it this way, your brain's created in a way to believe everything you tell it. In other words, whatever you say, particularly repeatedly over time, um, kind of becomes programmed into your brain. So how do you overcome the program from the past? Well, you have to use the same process. So uh, listen to scripture from Psalm chapter 1. How blessed is a man or woman who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. This is Psalm 1, 1 through 3. But his delight, his or her delight, is in the law of the Lord. When you see the law of the Lord in our New Testament reality, just the word of God is the way I would say it. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, God's law, he, the blessed person, meditates day and night. That person will be like a tree, <coughs> excuse me, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he or she does, he or she prospers. In other words, you end up with a pretty good life if you meditate in God's word. And that word meditate means to ponder or murmur to yourself. So you're just kind of whispering to yourself. Whispering to yourself. Well, obviously the content of that is important. So what we talked about last week was how important it is to say things a certain way, to say the truth. What I want to do today is share with you one of the most simple but powerful ways I've learned to do that. And that is to take a passage of scripture, not just any old passage, but one that's pushing your thoughts in the direction you need to correct. Remember what we're talking about, identify challenge and change. Identify ants, automatic negative thoughts, challenge them, question them, and we've talked about that in previous uh, issues, um, and then exchange them or replace them. For instance, let's just walk through one. I like to use Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm. if you would, turn there, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And what, what I have lear had learned to do years ago is first person, um, personalize it, and I'm going to read through it, and I want you to imagine that I'm, I might be walking around, uh, I might be sit sitting and doing this, but here's the key. I would recommend that you do it out loud and repeatedly. So I would take a passage like Ephesians 2, 10, 2 1 through 10, and, uh, and I would read it like this, and if you're following along, you'll see what I'm doing. Once I was dead because of my disobedience and my many sins. I used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world. This is the New Living Translation, by the way. I used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit who's at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By my very nature, I was subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God. So I'm reading this out loud, and I'm personalizing it, first person. And I'm kind of describing how I used to live, which is the truth. And then I hit verse 4 out loud. But God is so rich in mercy... And he loved me so much that even though I was dead because of my sins, he gave me life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that I have been saved. For he raised me from the dead along with Christ and seated me with him in the heavenly realms because I am united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to me in all future ages, as an example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward me, as showed in all he has done for me, who is united with Christ Jesus. God saved me by his grace when I believed, 
and I can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things I've done, so there's no room for me to boast. For I am God's masterpiece. He has created me anew in Christ Jesus so I can do the good things he planned for me long ago. Now, I want you to notice all I did was take a passage of scripture, reading it out loud, putting myself in first person. Now, what happens when I do that? Well, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, whose voice do you hear more than anyone else's? Your own. So faith comes, faith grows, faith uh, pushes contradictory information out of the way as we hear the truth. So like what I would do with a passage like this is I would read it over and over and over. Dude, that just sounds kind of weird. Well, the ugly things, the ants, the automatic negative thoughts that you say about yourself, you've said them over and over and over and over and over about yourself. So it's it's going to take some force to push those ants out of the way and make this type of information, this truth, the reference points from which your soul derives reality. This is the truth. This is reality. This is the real me. You're lazy, you'll never mount anything. Remember that from my father. You, you know, all these negative, you, you know, you, I, I am a disappointment. All those thoughts were lodged in my soul and they, to a great degree, directed and shaped my experience of reality. So I take God's word and I say it. Remember, we've talked about this. Faith comes by hearing. I hear my voice in more than anybody else's. You speak the truth until you believe it. And then you speak the truth because you believe it. Last week, we looked at Romans 10 that has this odd relationship between tongue and heart, heart and tongue. If you speak with your mouth you'll be made righteous if you i mean if you believe in your heart you you're you're righteous that um Jesus Christ is lord and if you if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead i'm sorry if you speak with your mouth that Jesus is lord you shall be saved there's this odd connection but awesome between our heart and our mouth the mouth programs the heart and then the heart fills the mouth with the truth or untruth it's programmed with. So I, and I don't know if you caught that as I was reading this, I would, you could almost hear it, I think, that I, there's certain sections that I just wanted to stop for a minute. Uh, but God, verse four, but God, I'm reading this negative flow about I was dead in my sin and all this stuff. And then I hear verse four and it's going like this. And then I hear verse four, but God, and it starts back up, but God, who's rich in mercy. Mercy is when I don't get what I do deserve, I do get what I don't deserve. Because of his great love toward us, or, and he loved me so much. I mean, sometimes I would just pause there. He loved me so much. That even though I was dead, even though, even though I was dead and disconnected because of my sin, he gave me life. Oh my gosh, what a life he's given, given me. Not one I earned, not one I took, but he's given me. And I would just read through this and I, my heart would just, just pause on certain thoughts. I mean, look at verse seven. So God can point to me in all future ages as an example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness. I want God to be able to say, I've been good to Chipper. I've been good to Chipper. I want you to learn how to say about yourself what God says. Just say about yourself what God says. You know what's going to happen if you do that? You're going to become accustomed to saying nice things about yourself to yourself. Wow, what a novel idea to say nice things to myself about myself. Love you guys. Hope this has been helpful. And I will uh, see you next week.